Hello everyone, this is Charlotte Dinkoy. Guess what, I forgot my tea. Oh my gosh, I prepared it and everything, but it's off screen now and I'm not gonna get up and get it. So welcome to Tuesday Tea Time with Charlotte. Things have been a little crazy. That just goes to show you that I forgot my tea for Tuesday Tea Time. Um, I had my big eye surgery last week. I, uh, it wasn't LASIK, by the way, it was laser surgery, but I thought it was LASIK. It was something called a PPK, it was for a tear. Um, and they just lasered it for five minutes and then it hurt, hurt, hurt for like really badly for three, four days. I was on some really interesting medication. Apparently those close to me said that I was spitting a lot while I was talking. So that is pretty embarrassing. So just be glad that you didn't have to witness that. And something very interesting happened while I was gone. A client, a very new client, had been getting some interesting emails from me and they'd been corresponding back and forth while I was off and couldn't read any of my emails. So what was very interesting, yeah, thanks Andrew, thanks so much, it's good to see you. So what happened was I just happened to check in after I went through all my emails yesterday after a whole week off, I checked in with them to see, to see if the payment had come in because I'm in Canada and they were gonna send me an international wire transfer from the US. And we've had issues in the past with other clients doing that. And so I happened to check in with them and I got a very, very angry email and I couldn't understand what was happening. It turns out that somebody had been copying my email, my email signature, and had been corresponding with this client and pressuring them through email to pay to a different account and through different means. And so uh, still a wire transfer, but to a different name and was very impatient. And I cringed when they sent me some of these emails, like I would never send to any client. So I was, first of all, like so shocked. I learned so much from this, you guys. I learned so much from this and today that's what I'm gonna share. I wrote down, oh, what did I learn about? Oh my gosh, I learned about seven things that I wanna to talk to you about. Um, when initially the correspondence with the uh, client started, uh, I was so floored. So the first thing that I learned was always handle emotional emails. Yeah, I'm not, I know, scammers are everywhere, Andrew always handle emotional emails from either anyone really, um, a, like a, an employee, or, but especially a client by phone. And my instinct was telling me, so the first time that I got this angry email, I thought maybe there's a confusion. So I just you know wrote something back saying, oh, I'm sorry for the confusion. And then I got back another email saying, we've been emailing about this every day and I didn't wanna call her on it and make her send the emails or anything, so I tried to, you know, again, appease her, but it didn't, it wasn't going away. The, the issue wasn't going away. So, and it, it didn't sit well with me because the anger was disproportionate to the, to the issue, to the question of just checking up on a payment. And so I decided to follow my instinct and, and talk to her on the phone. And then everything came out that I, I said, I have never even seen emails from your accounting. I've never seen emails from you about any payment or mentioning anything. And here's the funny thing, you guys, their bank had a glitch, otherwise they would have done the payment to this other woman. And so, you know, God like intervened in some way and there was a glitch with their bank and they couldn't make the transaction. But that's why, while my, you know, my surgery, and the thing is I had eye surgery so I couldn't read and I couldn't email, I couldn't check on anything I was completely, almost completely offline for almost an entire week. So how anybody knew this, and by the way, the emails they'd been getting from me were from my um, email address, but with one letter, two email addresses, but they were one or two letters had been switched. So you couldn't really see. So it was instead of repositioner, the ER at the end had been reversed. So nobody noticed and they kept hitting reply and reply and all this communication just kept going. And they had copied exactly my signature and they, they were sending an email from somewhere else. So it was such a huge, huge, huge wake up call for me. So I put down all the lessons. So the first lesson again was always handle emotional emails by phone. 
everything was resolved, the relationship was saved, but all, you know, a lot of money was saved. My God, um, not only could I have lost the client entirely, but the money that they were trying to send to me, we frozen, you know, all my bank accounts are frozen. Now everything's changed. So um, everything uh, worked out because we spoke by phone. Had I continued to email and resisted picking up the phone, and thank God I'm not a millennial because, no offense to any millennials, but they really, so many of my millennial clients refuse to pick up the phone. They, they will just resist. So don't resist. Hopefully, you know, do like the old folks and pick up the phone. The second thing that I learned was agree to payment delay contingencies. So because I knew from before that um, the international wire could result in um, delays or it could result in complications, we should have had a backup plan. In fact, the client themselves said, if you're, if you're okay, since it's delayed, you know, go ahead and, and charge our credit card like you did the first time. And the scammer said, no, we don't accept credit cards. So then they, the client was even more frustrated and confused. But if you from the start have some sort of, not just the payment dates and plan, which you obviously do, but have a contingency plan and say, you know, if, if um, it's delayed by 10 days, could we take it off of this? Right, agree to it. So that's the second thing that I learned. The third thing was, oh my God, and I resist, I had resisted this. So like, unlike the, the millennials, like I wasn't born with a computer in my hand. I wasn't born with a cell phone in my hand, right? I'm, I'm gonna be 52 soon. So what I learned is change constantly and um, regularly, change all your passwords. And I know some people have um, this on a rotation, but my team was up all night from yesterday till today changing every single password that I have. And there's like, I don't know, a hundred. And um, so now we have systems and we have everything and we've had them, thank God I have such a great team who knows how to do all this. So thank you, thank you. But, uh, and then you discover all the passwords that you forgot because you were using your thumb to get in. All these things is just, but if you're doing it continually and um, regularly, it's just gonna become part of your routine. And I know that's that's such a no-brainer, but for small, tiny businesses, that takes so much time and effort and recording them, and, but do it because that's what we have to do. Um, one of the other things that I learned was opt into the two-step um, authenticate authentication. And I've, I'm doing that now with a whole bunch of things that offer it, take it. Take the, the, the um, yeah, take the actual opportunity if it's given to you. I know it's such a pain. For example, my, my team, and I have a number of people who go into my social media and Facebook has that two-step uh, authentication. And they're always frustrated. They're constantly texting me like, oh, I just tried to get in. Could you send it to me? I tried to get in. So I'm telling you, it, it's a necessary evil because it's just an added security step. So that's one thing that I learned after being scammed. Um, here's the other thing that I had been told by my virtual terminal company. Uh, I use Helsum. They had said it is safer for you to keep confidential information, especially financial information on paper because it's less hackable. Because if it's sitting in your home, unless somebody breaks into your home, that credit card number of a client is not going to be discovered and so you know and then you destroy it so what i do is i um, don't let any of my machines save it i keep it on for the duration of a contract i keep it on paper and then i destroy it so that's one thing that i learned from them is keep confidential information on paper as much as you can and then destroy it um, the next thing that I learned by being hacked was um, have a go-to security and recovery person. I didn't have one. My team luckily were able to control the extent. I called the bank, they got their security team involved. Uh, my accounts are frozen, but I'm a, a micro business. The client is an $11 million business and they obviously ha outsourced this um, they work in the industry themselves, but like I didn't, if, if the leak had come from me, which we're now thinking it didn't, um, 
I wouldn't have a small business security person to, to be able to help me clog up the leak and then stop up the leak and then to do recovery or whatever. I just found out this whole new world of you know cybersecurity, which I never thought because I have a Mac and that's it, and I buy you know like um, the antivirus, I uh, do all my compliance stuff with my virtual terminal, so I thought I was safe. But again, I we still don't know how they copied my email. Uh, what we're thinking now is that the client's email was compromised because they must have had, uh, the scammers must have had crawlers through their email to find the, um, the, the wire information. Because I sent a void check, a void, um, electronic void check in email. So they must have picked it up somehow and then decided to mimic my email and continue to email them from another address. And it wasn't discovered until the whole scam and ruse came out. Uh, and so one of the things that I'm really interested in now is there must be cyber insurance, like cybersecurity insurance. I've never looked into it, but I'm definitely going to look into it. So anybody who uh, knows anything about, for micro businesses, any of the security that's affordable and that doesn't suck up a ton of time, but has its uses obviously, and hopefully is North American or even international, would be great. So those are some of the things that I learned. I honestly could not, for the life of me, force myself to do a topic on marketing and sales when this was so top of mind. And there's so much, you feel so vulnerable when one, you can't see, because I had the eye surgery last week, but two, um, <laughs> your business is attacked while you're gone. And so if any of you are watching and you're my clients, if anybody, uh, like if my email is reaching out to you and asking for you to change the way you pay me, most of you are on, have given me your credit card information and we're set up um, automatically. But if any other um, emails come to you to try to get that information or change that information, let me know. But that shouldn't happen because we don't think the leak uh, originated here and we also um, have changed every password and um, frozen all the accounts. So that should not be an issue. But I'm so curious to hear from all of you who have either experienced this or have mitigated this in the past or know of specialists who help in this industry. That's great. Yes, thank you, Andrew. That is great. So yeah, there is insurance for that cybersecurity. Well, that makes sense, right? Absolutely. It just has to make sense in a way that uh, for micro businesses and honestly, sadly, uh, when I used to have um, omissions and errors um, insurance and the one time that I did need it, they found a loophole and a way not to, uh, not to pay me. I just keep getting um, messages from people. So this is great. So you guys have a safe, happy rest of the week. Next time I promise not to forget my tea and uh, stay COVID and cyber safe. All the best everyone.